Good evening, everybody, and welcome. Let's call to order our Linwood City Council work session for this evening, October 16th, 2019. This is the second time this year that our council has hosted a round table. The one that we did before our one tonight was um, focused on housing and development. And tonight they want to hear from our businesses uh, and sort of get a better feel of how we're doing as a city uh, in serving you. And uh, so the way we're going to do this, we'll do uh, brief introductions around the table. And then you got a list of questions emailed to you that are also in front of you. Uh, what council's asked us to do is uh, t for me to call on you one by one and look at those questions, pick one or two that you want to respond to in three minutes. And then we'll do another round, so you can pick another two that you want to respond to, or one, whatever you want to do, whatever speaks to you. Uh, and then council, I think, will want to uh, ask questions and get clarification. So that's the process that we'll do. Uh, so to start with, I'm Nicholas Smith. I'm the mayor of Linwood, finishing up my sixth year. Humbled to be the servant here. Uh, I'm Benjamin Goodwin, the city council president. I also want to thank everyone for uh, being here this evening. As the mayor said, this is the second round table that we've held this year. Uh, and we're really, the council is really focused on hearing from the community, hearing from those that uh, really participate and have, um, for, back of letter, for lack of a better term, some skin in the game, you know, with, with what happens in the city. And, and we are very interested in, in knowing what the city council can do and what the city can do to help uh, the businesses in the area to not just survive but thrive in Linwood. Uh, as, as the mayor also said, you know, we did the same thing for uh, trying to figure out what we want to do with housing and what the, what the city can help with. And so we're trying to do the same thing with businesses. Uh, and we'll continue to do this through this year and hopefully in the years to come to, to continue to get input from businesses. So as the mayor said, we'll just go around the table quickly and have everyone introduce themselves. And then the mayor will ask the folks to start. Yeah, so the microphones, I think we share two by two. Let's make sure the red lights are on all of them so that we're not, because uh, we are being recorded. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, my name is Alfredo Barajas. I'm the owner of a uh, stop of Mexican restaurant here in Linwood. Uh, we've been in business since 2006 in the community. Hi, I'm Shannon Sessions. I'm one of the city council members. And um, happy to be here. It's so good to see you guys, and thank you for coming to uh, talk to us. Councilmember Ian Cotton, thanks all for taking time out of your busy schedules to come here. I'm Susan Leonard. I own Bindi Yoga, just right up the street. John Swain, we have a faith-based uh, nonprofit organization called Marketplace Connections do entrepreneurial leadership training in a few places around the world and locally in Edmonds and Linwood. Good evening. My name is Fong Nguyen. I'm the owner of Anna's Home Furnishings, and I also represent the Linwood Business Consortium. And I want to wish everybody a happy National Bosses Day. Mm -hmm. Thank you. My, uh, my employees were gracious enough to give me the day off today, knowing that Wednesdays and Fridays are my days off anyway. So. <laughs> I'm Rick Ross, City Council. Hi, I'm Shannon Tizen, uh, owner of Experience Momentum. We've been in business since 2007 here in Linwood. Good evening. I'm Shirley Sutton, a council member. Welcome. All right, happy Wednesday, y'all. I'm Flex Velasco, owner of Anytime Fitness Linwood, and we've been open since officially July 31st. Mm. Mm. Fantastic. Trevor Johnson, Blackwood Builders Group. We build homes, and we're based here in Linwood, just north of the city limits. All right, George Hurst, council member, um, and since Trevor won't say it, I will. His uh, company has been nominated to be one of the three finalists by the Association of Washington Businesses, is that right? As Employer of the Year. 
and he only is going up against people like Les Schwab and Premier. So <laughs> anyway. Congratulations. Yes, and I'm Mark Sinews, our Mayor's Office staff, and welcome. And good board. Introduce yourself, please. I'm Gunmore Tweed. I'm the owner of Talent Services. I've been in Linwood business owner for since 1982. Wow, fabulous. All right, so good work. We're, um, just to catch up, we're looking at the questions that are in front of you. They were emailed to you uh, earlier. Yeah. And uh, Jose, are you, are you willing to uh, start by answering something from this page? Sure. Uh, no order, is this whatever order I want? Um, I'll start off with, I think one of the, that caught my eye was, uh, Jay, the three concerns for, for my business. Um, one would be the minimum wage, which is a statewide thing. Mm -hmm. That's one of my main concerns for the next couple of years or so. Um, the employment, which ties into the minimum wage, and number three would be taxes be my, my main concern with my business. All right. Uh, and Beth does have a, uh, this is Beth Morris, our council uh, administrative assistant, and she has a little three-minute bell. Oh, okay. okay so <laughs> uh, so yeah, well, is there yeah. anything else you'd like to share? Um, I think uh, I've, I've had always a great experience with the city. I was fortunate enough I had a great uh, contractor when I first built out and so uh, we built out a few restaurants our family has father and my brother and we've run into both instances where we haven't hired the right people to do it and you run into the the city part where the plans don't go as well or they you know you're back and forth and wasting months and stuff so I was pretty fortunate where my contractor that, that built out was uh, right on and uh, had a good experience with the city I didn't you know he told me build out would be about three and a half months and I think it was four months you know total to build out in December of six I'm not sure how the building process is now but I had a good experience with the city and I haven't had a negative one yet so you know. thank you good for yes would you like <laughs> to choose a question or two and speak to it for about three minutes well um, I don't know how the city can really work on the parking lots all around the city. <laughs> you know, we used to call it the what it, parking lot shuffle when we go through 196th. But one of the things that I, uh, my business is in a kind of an insecure place, and I've had wonderful experience with the city police when I've called them about things and currently they're also signed to um, be permitted to come on to um, the area that where my office is if there are things but I find it really unsettling that um, people sleep underneath the deck where my office is people that are homeless and they need a place to be, and I know that, but it's it's unsettling, and that is one thing that I that really concerns me about the business in, in Linwood. I mean, maybe it's like that everywhere, but here's where I am. Thank you, Susan. Well, she kind of touched on my issue as well. Can you hear me? I feel like Madonna. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when we, we opened up our first studio in 2011 and um, when we and I'm just right up here by Ed Surf, the old Ed Surf Plus when we first came in I loved this area a lot and I thought it, I felt secure and happy there and I'm still there and I moved from one building to another building um, but it is steadily gotten worse and worse. Um, I had Tent City last summer in my in my back parking lot where they kind of took over my dumpster area and um, at first I was trying to be as, as 
nice as I could possibly be um, because I knew that they really didn't have anywhere else to go but two people turned into four and then I had 20 at, at times and when I did call the police um, and I had all the banks complaining to me you've got to do something you've got to do something I got I didn't even know what to do. When I did call the police, they would come out and they'd make them leave, but they would come back every night. And then the police, unfortunately, I sometimes I would get cards, call the social worker type thing, and I was like, I don't feel comfortable doing that. We still, t still to this day, I don't have any. Typically, I don't have mer very many people out there. We've ta locked up the area several times. <laughs> but they just broke down the fence and they'd go in anyhow. But um, I don't have that too much now. But it is a problem because like, my employees are afraid to go out and take the garbage out at night and stuff like that. So it's a, it, seems, it seems a little dark area now. I, I feel like we're kind of going downhill with the way I felt in 2011 versus now in that regard. Thank you. John? Good. Yeah, we're an educational organization and we teach a series of classes on entrepreneurship. So I was interested in F on your list for women and minority businesses. We partnered with Rosario Reyes, who was supposed to be here tonight, but she couldn't make it. Uh, she started LETI 20 years ago, and we taught our classes to about 10 of her Latino students last year. Uh, one of the students was a lady named Jeanette. Jeanette was from Peru. In Peru, she was a lawyer when she got to the U.S. She wasn't able to practice law. She went through the classes. She's been a student at Edmonds Community College, so she took the classes. She has started her legal translation business for Spanish. We have some microloan money, so we funded her with a little bit of money to start up. So it's really been exciting just to see her get started and get going and go through all the adjustments that she's going through culturally. So my thought on F, this will sound self-serving, and I don't intend it to be, <laughs> but we've had fun uh, teaching these classes that are listed in the brochure. And my thought would be for Linwood to take an idea like this to try to connect up with women and minority business people that haven't started a business yet and see if there's some way that uh, the council and partnership with the business community, and I'd love to have some of you come and teach also. We need more teachers on a regular basis. Uh, come and teach, help us do the classes, but see if this could be expanded in Linwood to start up some new businesses. And that's something I'd be very interested in being a part of. A lot more to the story, but uh, you get the idea. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I think that the city could add tremendous value to our community uh, by offering a lot more perks. People want perks where they live and where they work. Um, it would be great if Linwood um, could offer more perks for businesses here. Uh, one suggestion would be uh, that we know that the Linwood Convention Center is not used very much by local residents here or by the business community. Um, so if we can make it more accessible by, uh, for businesses, um, I think that would be a great thing. Uh, one of the consortium members uh, who owns a mental health clinic over in Mount Lake Terrace told me the other day that she tried to rent a space at the convention center and they wanted $700 for just a small room so that she could meet with her clients. $700 is a lot of money for a small business for just a few hours. So why can't we make it free for small businesses maybe once a year? Uh, to, to host an event or uh, a meeting place. Uh, if the city and the PFD who, who manages the convention center could partner with perhaps the Linwood Chamber and say, you know, if you're a Linwood Chamber member, we'll give you a free pass to use the convention center once a year. Uh, I think that would be a great perk for, for being a business here in Linwood. It would help promote the chamber, help promote the convention center, 
and it really doesn't cost the city anything out of their budget. Uh, businesses here have resources that the city doesn't have, and the city has resources that us business owners want to use. So if we can get creative and create programs where we can share our resources, I think in the end everybody benefits. Thank you. Shannon. Oh, I have lots. <laughs> um, of course you do. <laughs> and this is your time. Yes. <laughs> so, you know, um, just kind of going through some of these questions. The first one, tax, right? And I think for myself, it's been fun to see our business grow from my wife and I. Uh, so two people being taxed to now we have 60 plus people, right? Mm -hmm. And now we have a business in Seattle. And some of our team members are employees in Linwood and they're employees in Seattle. So I'm getting double taxed just for employees. And I, every little tax like adds, we just hit the 50 FTE equivalents and I'm getting taxed extra because now we're a large business, right? And so it's like, I just feel like this uh, employee tax, if there's a way to break it down by employees. Limwood has a lot of corporate businesses that have lots of employees and as a small business owner like you feel that like you feel the per employee tax and it just you know I would love for that to be discussed and see what some options are there. Um, I feel like the the city has been great in getting involved in the community, doing things. Uh, the Fair and 44th is fantastic. It brings businesses together. It brings uh, the private sector, public sector, just an opportunity to connect. Uh, I love that you all help sponsor the Celebrate Schools 5K event. I think those are great community events, and I feel like we need more of that. We need a sense of community in Linwood, and so what are more ways that the city can get involved in those things? Those are tremendous, and we need more of that. Um, we are now expanding. We've outgrown, super grateful and blessed uh, of our current space, so we now need an, an administrative office. So I'm going through the permit process again, and the third time around, and uh, you know, permits, they just take a long time still, you know? Like, I know we're behind the eight ball with staffing, but when we started our process, we just got our permit the other day. It was seven, eight weeks, and it's like, oof. That's just, you know, when every penny counts, and now we sign a lease, and it's six to eight weeks out before we can get a permit, and now we gotta line up our contractor, and now the contractor's gotta do the work. It's like, from when we signed our lease in July, we're looking at maybe January. And I'm like, that's crushing. And so what can we do to expedite this permit process? Just needs to happen. We need, we need to find a way to do that. Um, how can we get business involved in the city and addressing some of these issues that uh, Susan brought up? And I met with Ashley Dawson and said, hey, we are willing to do a mentorship program with uh, some aspect of homelessness or working with the nonprofits, the Boys and Girls Club in the area. How can we as business be a mentor mm -hmm. to folks in need in our community? And how can the city, private sector, and those in need come together to figure out something really cool that we can do? And I, I think that's on us as a business, but it would be great to have the city helping to facilitate that. You know the needs. You know who's at the homeless camps. You know people's situations. I was talking to Ashley and she's like, yes, that mentorship program sounds great. Um, what might that look like? So I'm going to be meeting up with her to kind of talk about what that looks like. Um, so those are just some of the things that I have to talk about. Thank you. Flex? All right. First one, um, question F, about the minority businesses underserved. I think just setting up you know, specific forms for, I'm going to create an acronym, uh, WMO, WOMO, Women Owned Minority Owned Businesses, to make it shorter. It's, it's understanding, hey, what's, what are the resources currently available? You know, who do we have that we can reach out to? Where can we get support? And also like setting up mentoring or co coaching partnerships with more served, more established businesses. 
Um, and, and also the, the fact that you guys are saying it's a fact that minority businesses are underserved. I mean, it's a fact, but it may not be known with the business owners that are minorities or, or women owned. So uh, again, we got to share that data point. Um, what KPIs or, you know, what, what data can we share to these underserved businesses? I mean, like, like myself, right? Women owned, minority owned, my wife and I own the business. And how, how can we understand how to compare ourselves to a well-served business? What's, what's that mean to be a underserved versus a well-served business? And then, you know, creating a playbook for these businesses. So there's an onboarding plan, there's a support plan, um, there's connections that we can easily make to those that are already, you know, well-served. And also creating like an advisory board to help these underserved businesses. And also leveraging technology, leveraging social media. It's so easy now to set up a Facebook group to get forums like this together in a, you know, more repeatable, more, I guess, electronic fashion. I mean, why, why should we wait for a council meeting once every two or three months to get groups like this together? I mean, let's just leverage the social media and the platforms that are there. Uh, I mean, like tonight I'm looking at, you know, Trevor, Jose, um, Shannon, tons of new business owners that haven't even met yet. And it's, it's like, there has to be easier ways to connect the business community versus relying on a... These meetings are great, don't get me wrong, but I feel like, again, with, with the rise of technology and how easy it is to connect with people via teleconference, video, you know, very immersive um, experience, I, I think that's a really good way to, to serve these underserved businesses. Um, another, I, also, um, to kind of piggyback off Shannon and, and Fong, you know, how, how do we get more uh, business, I guess, in Linwood, right? Uh, how do we promote the city more? One thing that I've noticed is a lot of cities have farmer's markets, right? They're, they're all weekly. And, and it's, it's a good way to get folks from out of the area to come to our area uh, and kind of visit Linwood for a really good reason. And it's a good way, again, for local businesses to promote their products, their services. Another good way to, to create community um, in a sense of, you know, something that we can all kind of look forward to. Like, hey, we know that every Sunday there's going to be a farmer's market at one of these parking lots that are kind of vacant, right? we got Dania Furniture. I hate to call them out, but that, it's a huge parking lot, for example, right? It's, it's like, let's use some of those resources to get people together and just keep creating that community, creating communications, creating relationships, and just opening up opportunities for, for more business. Thank you. Trevor. So I was fortunate enough to be in an event last night with uh, this former Speaker of the House, Frank Chop, who was the longest serving in, I think, 21 years or so. So he had 10 points. I'm going to keep it to three tonight, so I've narrowed it down. So I won't be talking as long as him. Um, even though he's very animated, and I probably couldn't keep up with his energy, even at my age. Um, I chose H as my first one. Why did we choose Linwood to establish business? We moved here as a family in 1984 when I was eight years old. My parents still live behind Harley Davidson, so Linwood's near and dear to my heart. Um, uh, Mayor Herdlicka was the one that kind of inspired me into early politics back in the day when, I, um, when he lived five doors behind us, and he's well-known mayor of Linwood back in the day. So um, we still love bringing the kids to the Linwood pool on the weekends to go swimming and all that. So Linwood's very near and dear to my heart uh, growing up here. Um, and it's also less expensive than the South End. We do build a lot of homes in Seattle, Bainbridge Island, and growing around the region. So it's definitely less expensive than looking at setting up headquarters in Seattle or Shoreline or Edmonds or other places. Um, so uh, I still think there's some great opportunity in Linwood for businesses. Uh, so that's my, my first one. Uh, number two, um, I put as uh, a note, I think one thing that many other great business owners in here have brought up is that we bring revenue into the city, um, you by bringing people into your restaurant, uh, all of us by having employees. I know my employees go out to places like Extapa for lunch, <laughs> and so there's, there's tax revenue being generated. Some people live um, in Linwood, so then there's the um, property tax, so some of the main sources of revenue. Um, I think anything government can do in any level to open up uh, the free market in a healthy way, in a sustainable way, um, lets growth happen. And I think Linwood's been very progressive in that over the, the last 50 years or so. Um, my third one was permits. It probably wasn't one of the topics on here, and regulation. Uh, one issue we've had 
and I know the city doesn't necessarily directly affect it, but as the fire marshals and the inspections in our businesses, they come in every year or two, and it seems like they always come up with something new out of the book. And I'll ask them, like, why didn't you mention that last year? We could have addressed that. So then we spend a lot of time and effort changing things that it's like, just give me the full book. So next year you come, I want to be 100% compliant. I don't want to have to change shelves and change where, um, you know, put a lot of more effort into that. I'd rather put effort into other things that are, that are beneficial. Um, again, not a, not a pure city regulation thing, I, I don't think, but a fire department, fire um, regulation was something that I could see at least for us, has affected us personally in business. And then number four was uh, K. What are some creative ideas your business can help enhance a veteran-friendly city? Is there anything you already do to benefit uh, veterans? Um, I, I'm very proud of our businesses. We actually own a couple other businesses that are in Linwood as well. Um, we have an excavation business. We sell windows to other builders in the greater Puget Sound region. Um, and we have a number of veterans that work for us. We have minorities. We have women. Um, and it's, it's very exciting. We, we, we just hire great people. And I don't, I don't care if you're purple or you served in the military six months or a year or a career. Um, my father-in-law is retired Army uh, colonel. And it's, it's just like it's just the right thing to do. So I think a lot of this stuff, it's hard to regulate it. But if we just abide by that kind of golden rule and do what's right, it's, you, you look for good people. And we're all sitting in this room because it's probably all good people here that want to do the right thing. And so... I don't know anything more to say. Just hire them. That's what I wrote down. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and it's just like any people. There's, you know, you're gonna have good, good veterans, and you're gonna have veterans that have more challenges from PTSD and different things like that that some of my friends have had from coming back from places that we've been engaged in conflict. <clears throat> so, I don't know. Those, those are my, those are my four points that I wrote down. So, echo some of the other people around this table. So, thank you for the invite and the opportunity to be here. Thank you for coming. The weather turned bad on us tonight. I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, so at this time, Council President and I would like to actually open it up for Council members to go around and ask one question, maybe a follow-up question to something that each of you shared. Um, Vice President Brazell, would you be ready to do that? You, sure you don't to have to. Not forcing you, but... <laughs> Um, I think that uh, Flex actually touched on this, but I'm very interested, interested in question G. What advice would you give to business owners that are new to Linwood? I like your idea of onboarding, but um, if other folks, as we go around the table, maybe have some more ideas about uh, advice to give to new businesses from your perspective. Do you want them to go around now or those who have an answer? Yeah. yeah. OK. Well, we can go around and you can opt to pass or, or uh, jump right mm -hmm. into that. Or here we can raise our hand and I call on you too. Yes, Susan. All right. I think that, um, as Shannon kind of pointed out earlier, is planning because my permit for my second building took well over a year. And the only reason, I am convinced, the only reason why we actually did get our permit was because of Ian. For him um, coming into my business and taking a class and asking a teacher how things were going. And she goes, maybe you should talk to the owner. And uh, I wrote him a long letter and I'm not kidding, within two weeks we had a permit. He made a meeting, we went into the city with my contractors, with the architect and a bunch of people and the first thing out of a person's mouth was, you're wasting our time and I went, well, you're killing me because I'm now paying double rent and um, stuff. So I would say make sure that you plan out you know, that, that's going to take some time mm -hmm. because I think we're under the impression it's going to take a couple months. And every time you get something turned back to you, that can be an eight-week turnaround again and again and again. And no one, you don't know who to talk to. You feel kind of lost because there's a lot of people in the same pot, it feels like. 
Thank you. Mm -hmm. Others? Yeah. Huh? I'll share some feedback that I got um, after talking to several new business owners that opened up their business this year. Um, it's not entirely gloom and doom out there. I've talked to several business owners and they said that, um, you know, initially when they were finding contractors, they were shocked that why would you want to open up your business in Linwood? Don't you know how hard it is to get a permit there? And that was the, the long-standing reputation here in Linwood for a long time. Um, but after talking to several of these business owners, uh, that wasn't the case for some of them. They said that the process was fairly pain, painless. Uh, it was straightforward. They did get their permits in a timely manner. There wasn't this going back and forth with the inspectors uh, like previously. Um, so there's been some changes down at the DBS department, and there's been some uh, positive things that have come from it. So um, I know that the city has had to make some tough decisions recently, but uh, it is getting better. Yeah, Shannon. Yeah, I think uh, as a new business coming into the city, I think directing them to a chamber of commerce, getting involved in the Linwood Business Consortium. Uh, I think those are key things. And just how do we connect our businesses to the community? You know, like we want this to be family friendly, safe, welcome to all. And as a business, uh, you're just trying to understand who is this community, community right? And Maybe there's parts of the community that you don't know, but getting involved in uh, a chamber, a business consortium, a local rotary, people that are involved in the community and directing businesses to that, I think is a great way to get a pulse of what's going on and where people can plug in. Thank you. Well, oh, I'll go to Gunhor first. Yeah, thank so you. Uh, so I think it was question or point G here, what advice would you give to business owners that are new to Limbaugh? And, um, you know, I've had kids, and I have grandkids, and they go to school, and they come home and they complain that they're ignored at school. And if I, start with, if I was to start a business again in Linwood, I wouldn't wait for them to... Um, find me because I didn't pay my bill. I, I would want to, it, it's a two-way street, and, and I, we never did go around and figure out what the services were that we needed and get to know people like the fire chief and all these things. I've gotten to know those by, sort of by emergency, and if I was to start today, I would start by getting to know the people that are leading this city, whether it's the fire department, Great. the um, EMTs, the mayor, the city council members, whatever. I think it's important to have a two-way street. That's what my grandkids. You have to start this. <laughs> Did you want to add something? Yeah, I wanted to add to what Shannon was saying. Um, I'd like to see the city create more opportunities uh, and partnerships for businesses to engage with the community as well. I think that the city should establish some type of outreach program uh, that could connect businesses with some of the city's uh, goals in mind. Uh, for example, the Adopt-A-Street program. My business was fortunate enough to adopt 44th Avenue out here uh, from 194th by the Linwood Police Station up to 186th Street, which is where we live, uh, across from the Linwood Elementary School. And this free program allowed my business to advertise itself as well as keep the community clean. Um, the program gave us an opportunity to not only participate, but also promote our business and spread awareness to the city's Adopt-A-Street program. Uh, during Fair on 44th, we partnered with the city to promote this program by donating and giving away a thousand litter pickers at the fair for free. Uh, through an outreach program, I think the city could, should adopt more free partnership programs like this that would allow businesses to advertise themselves within 
city events and programs. It's an inexpensive way for the city to help support and promote small businesses here. Thank you. Shanna, would you like to ask a question? Sure. So, Trevor mentioned about um, being better and friendly and really, like you said, just hiring good people. Um, how can the rest of you tell us maybe some creative ways uh, that you think we could make the city more veteran friendly through your businesses? You've stumped them. You have. Well, yes. Oh. Well, the thing is, probably too, is that maybe um, you know that might not be up on the top of your priority list too. Maybe, um, and maybe it's a variety of things, kind of like what Trevor said. So, so let's expand that question a little bit, and um, not only better and friendly, but a ways to. What are some creative ways? that you are already reaching out to our public, whether it's veteran benefits or friendliness or other ways that you're trying to get um, new customers to pay attention to your business. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's a better way to do it. Yeah, Susan. <laughs> we, um, we don't do it to have um, people come to our business. However, we do do or have had um, many instances where we've done yoga classes at some of the um, senior centers around the area. Um, the problem is is that it's really hard to get them because <laughs> they like, what? <laughs> you want us to do what? <laughs> but, um, so we do a lot of chair yoga and things like that. It's just really hard to establish it. It's been done in the past, but that's about the only thing I can really come up with in my business. Mm -hmm. Thank you. For myself, uh, I've always tried to help out the high schools or the elementary schools. I'm right by Beverly. Uh, we've worked with the PTA from Beverly Elementary. Um, I try doing whatever school. Um, they do the gold cards. They do uh, one of the little tickets for baseball. So I try to be as active as I can with the high schools or the schools near me. You know, um, they're close by and it's good business for me. And it's, if it works out for them, I give them good, 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 I give them good offers. Mm -hmm. I think on the base on the football one, it's I give them about twenty five dollars on discount, and the card itself is twenty dollars. So, you know, some people go, I just buy it because you're on there, and it pays for itself. So, <laughs> what, that's, where do I get a card? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, well, the, the football team sells them. So that's that's from for uh, that's one thing I, I I like doing. It's it doesn't cost me a whole lot, but it, you know I don't mind sure. giving out the discount or whatever. But which football team was that? It's for uh, Meadowdale. Meadowdale, hi. Mm -hmm. And I've done the Linwood one. And um, so that for me has, has helped out to be active with my the schools around it. and whatever event I can help out. You know, I think the football team has a dinner before every home game and they come out to me and I, you know, hey, I can mm -hmm. do this, feed 80 kids, you know. Mm -hmm. so like, I'll help you out, you know. <laughs> so, but, um, I think for business owners, I think it's important to get active with the, the schooling. Or my kids go to a private school, St. Thomas More, and we try doing as much help. I don't have a lot of free time, you know, because I'm tied. To, I'm married to the business. You know, I think the small businesses are. You find that out, you know. But uh, as I, I tend, I like to participate in that the schooling stuff as, as much as I can. Thank you. Jose. Thank you, Jose. Uh, Shannon, did you want to? Shannon, can you expand? Are you kind of uh, asking how can our businesses get the veterans more involved, or what? It could be getting did. veterans more involved, or just honoring our veterans with, you know, a discount or a special day or something like that. And is that something like at the Heroes Cafe, maybe? 
impl that would be an opportunity to come and present like right. uh, something to Correct. get them involved or offer a special something. Sure, and you know some cities have had like put a, like a little decal or something on their windows, and there's a variety of types of things like this we could do, right? A decal on your window saying you know you're veteran friendly, or and and I mean I know our city really tries to be welcoming to everyone, so I. I, I pinpoint veterans because that is, I'm very much an advocate for, for the veterans in particular, but in just trying to make Linwood a veteran-friendly city in general because of all the different things that we've realized, how much they um, want to be involved more in our community and how many of them are here and how little they have options, until they have a lot of more options nowadays because of what we're doing to do this. But, um, so that's why I focus on that. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes a little decal, you know, sometimes it, you, know, you have a decal that says dog friendly, pet friendly, you know. And it's stuff like that for me, as we're building and thinking about our city center, you know, I want things to be robust and vibrant and in ways that it's interactive for our residents. So you're shopping along, you see your veteran fr friendly, oh, I'm going to buy my stuff here because I'm a veteran. I'm going to get a little discount. I mean, a little thing, but I feel that's really cool. Um, or a dog. You know, oh, have our downtown dog friendly and be able to go inside of different businesses. Or you're just finding ways, like you mentioned about, um, or somebody mentioned, about farmer's market um, flex. And, you know, we have tried a farmer's market, by the way. Um, and we hope to bring that back for the city center. But my point is, it's just finding creative ways to build community, for you guys to help us build this community that we want to see vibrant, robust. Reasons to bring out of town guests to our city center. Reasons to come there and to do these things. So, that's Thank all. Thank you, Shannon. I have a quick question. Oh. How, um, I've never really thought about the veterans, to be honest with you in that. Is there a big veteran following that, that they they come to the council meetings and they're like, we don't have any activities and no one thinks about us? Or so just real briefly, and I'm happy to talk to you about this more later, but um, in the process of trying to make Linwood a more veteran-friendly city, we have a one-stop shop that um, allows all veterans and their families to get questions answered for VA benefits. It could be housing. It could be job things. It could be a variety of things. It's a, it's Verdant next to Applebee's there. It's a nonprofit that allows us to have space there and these professionals to come together to serve the veterans in this way. And um, also we have a one month or one time a month that's called Heroes Cafe that also meets at Verdant. We hoped when this started um, two, three years ago now that we'd get 20 people to have a safe place for a coffee clutch or something like that. There's more than 100 people there every single month. And it's not always the same people. Um, we have our Veterans Museum, which is at Heritage Park. It's one of the only Veterans Museums in the state, is in the city limits of Linwood. And there's other things, but those are examples. Yeah, I just never, yeah. never really thought about that. All right, go get them. Yeah. Go get them. <laughs> Same here. I, I haven't really thought about that until I saw these questions like last week. Mm -hmm. But it's like, why, why don't we put like a Veteran Hero coupon book, you know, with all the businesses cooperating and offering discounts and programs. I mean, I'm happy to like offer That's free really boot camps like once a month just to keep the veterans yes, right. physically fit or active. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You know, so. Yeah. Gunvor? So, um, it also in Linwood or right on the border, there is the the home, 20 unit home for veterans. Um, What's the name Sebastian of the Sebastian place. Yeah. yeah, they, uh, I've gone there with our Rotary Club and by myself to support them. We bring them food. Um, after our lunches, we brought them food. We have cooked um, uh, Thanksgiving dinners and brought to them. And Christ from the room itself. Uh, Christmas uh, dinners. And I don't know I if I'll be doing it this year, but any group can go there and mingle with those people. They love talking to people. And they're very funny. They're interesting people. The the uh, different re residents 
change from time to time, but there are some very interesting people, and they just absolutely adore it that you come and participate in their life. So I can recommend that. And I don't know how the city can get involved in that, but. Let's move on to Council Member Cotton. What would you like to follow up on? Yeah, well, uh, thank you all for being here. I know that, um, you know, uh, we're taking time out of everyone's very valuable schedule, so I really appreciate it because um, the, the comments are well received. I, I think from my standpoint, and a lot of you around this table have kind of hinted at it, um, but it would be interesting just to kind of maybe d take a deeper dive down uh, on question M there, um, that if the council or the city were to invest in any one service, um, what service that we currently provide or don't currently provide um, would you like us to see invest in most? So it's kind of a, you know, if, if you had one thing to pick that that we should do, either start doing or or push more chips onto the table in, uh, we'd really love to hear, um, I think, from a budgeting for priorities and trying to prioritize where to spend tax dollars. Um, and where services to deliver to the community and the business community, so. So I don't currently permit anything in, in Linwood as far as building, but I know what everyone around here is talking about on permitting because we permit things all over uh, the region, and that is something, in our opinion, can be improved and put more chips in that, in that side. Uh, to expedite because it, it, it helps I can guarantee you every business owner around this table it went, whether you have a TI in your restaurant or your yoga studio or, you know, or anything or we go to build homes or do a remodel for a client or add a deck at Shannon's house or whatever and if she wasn't a counselor you know it'd be it, these are things that we face in every city so I know what their their pain is I can't say I've experienced it personally but that would be my feedback is, is getting more people staffed up uh, we built a lot in the city of Seattle, and so when they went, when we all went through the recession, a lot of people got laid off. There was less stuff going, and when we came out of the recession, a lot of cities and places were understaffed. Yeah. Um, and so that's that's a need. Most people that go in and speak for everybody around us don't use this. That's a pain point in pretty much every region. Thank you, Trevor. Quick question, Mike. For you guys that have had previous businesses. Is it uh, is it harder? To, is, was it easier to get it when you were, weren't in business here, or now that you're in business, is it changed? I mean, that's one thing. Like your current business, so you you'd figure it it'd kind of be quicker, maybe in a way. They know who you are. It's like it's like my license. Like if I were to move my location, they pretty much keep the same thing, but they got to go through the. I don't have to do the background check again. So I don't know if it's it's. That's changed you being a current business and you're just kind of reapplying and, you know, with that. Yeah, no, that's a good question. I see Ashley back there in the back. Uh, she might be able to answer that. But um, the I just believe right now that the, the permitting department is going through new staff. There's been a lot of turnover. And so whether I've been in business since 2007 or not, it's taking, it's just taking time. Yeah. And so, you know, I know a lot of people in the city and it just takes time. And I'm like, you're looking at the clock, right? Uh, but I will say there's been a lot of effort and a time and attention and effort put toward it. And so the people you're working with are much friendlier. And that process, um, I would like to say it's better. It's just I feel like we're really short-staffed and that's causing a pinch. That's, that's what's been John, you had your hand up. Well, Ian, I had a question with your question, <clears throat> and that is if somebody came to the city council or to this building and said, I'm a veteran, I'd really like to start a business, would you direct them then to the Chamber of Commerce? What, what would you do with somebody like that? Well, um, the chamber would be one place. I think uh, I would probably direct them towards David Kleitch, our okay. economic development director, and say, you know, mm -hmm. you know, he's kind of our point in the city for resource on okay. on businesses, and so he would kind of be, I think, the gatekeeper. And I'm kind of looking down at the mayor, and I'm yeah. seeing her yeah. nod. So. No, it's okay. a great place yeah. to start. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Well, my thought to piggyback on that would be I would love to be able to partner with veterans to help them start businesses. We've been doing this for about four years now in different places around the world. We've done it five times here in the Edmonds Linwood area, twice with Edmonds Community College students, and then twice with the Latino organization that Rosario heads up. And I just feel like if there's a connection that I could make with the chamber, possibly to partner with them, I don't know if they offer a series of classes on how to start a business. I don't know the answer to that question. Then the other thought that I had, and I don't know if you can do this legally or not, is to provide seed money to people like that out of your budget to help them start a business. We've been using a microloan program charging 2.5% interest for small microloans. Not 100% of startup costs, but up to about 50% or so. Uh, that's something I'd be very interested in thinking about partnering with the city or the chamber on to expand what we're currently doing. Thank you. Yeah. Any other feedback? All right, Councilmember Ross. Yes, thanks everyone for being here. Uh, my question actually is not on the paper. Because Ian stole the one I was going to ask. So I had to make one up at the last second. I do that sometimes. I'm curious um, how many of your employees live in Linwood? And if you know why they don't, why they don't. I'm a commuter, and I think people should live close to where they work. Mm -hmm. And if there was anything that we could do to encourage that, I think we should. Um, it's, it takes a lot of time out of your day to get to work. I recently added 45 minutes each way. Me too. And that takes a lot. <laughs> it takes a lot. I mean, it's great to be able to sit on the bus and watch traffic go by, but <laughs> it, it's a chunk out of my day. So I would, I have always thought we should encourage employees and employers to encourage employees to live here if they work here. So I'm curious if you know what any of those barriers might be. I think I saw Shannon's hand up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we have a very small percentage of our folks that live here. Small. And what, uh, why don't they live here is they like the eclectic life of Seattle. We have a group of folks that lives in Seattle and they go to they have their coffee shops, right? It's not Starbucks, right? And how many coffee shops? We have um, a couple of them here in Limwood, but in Seattle you go every block and it's a brand new coffee shop. They have their unique pubs that they go to. We have Big E, right? And next to Big E is, that's right. And so, <laughs> you, you, you know, like then they go to see live music, right? And then they get to go and uh, go around Green Lake for a jog. They love the Seattle vibe and community. What are we missing? Hopefully the city center is going to be bringing in not more corporate businesses, but more vibrant opportunities for people to involve. They love going to local bookshops, right? to have a coffee and read books and do those types of things and watch live music. Um, so we have a group of folks that lives in uh, the closer to Seattle and where things are going on and to come here is too boring. And it doesn't matter how close to work they are, Linwood is too boring. That's not what they want to do. Um, then we have the group of folks that uh, are maybe starting their family and this is kind of appealing to them, but South Everett is about $100,000 cheaper to buy a home. And so we actually have a group of folks that are living in South Everett, and we have our Seattle group, and this middle area that we tend to live in is not attractive at all for those reasons. And that's why out of all of our employees, it's a couple live in Linwood. Yeah, good work. I would say that the, the rent or price of a house is what affects the people that work for me. I know two live in, in Linwood, and um, the others live um, north of Linwood in South Everett, and, and one is just buying a house, and she's buying it in Everett because she could afford it. You know, house prices, home prices, rents are a big factor, I think. Did 
Did you want to add to something? I, I'm going to say that, uh, rent in Limwood is cheap for the millennials. Okay. And when you have to rent a 800 square foot house or apartment in Seattle for $3,500, <laughs> and you can come to Limwood and get a three bedroom for $2,000, the, the bang for the buck goes a long way, but they still, a certain group will not live here because everything they do is there. Everything's within walking distance. It's within walking distance. And so I think, yes, it, the, the, the expensiveness is all relative. And it's relative to the, the population whether it's a senior, whether it's a millennial, whether it's, uh, you know, in Seattle they have dinks. Mm -hmm. Dual income, no children, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And for them, $3,500 is nothing. I'm, I have, we have two incomes, no kids. I'm staying in Seattle where it's great. I could save $1,500 a month in Linwood. Nope, not going to do it. And so that is, I have people that commute from West Seattle I have people that commute from Bellevue. I have people that commute from all over in Seattle up to Linwood. They love their job, thank God. Um, but they will not move here. Shannon, what would you do to make Linwood less boring? Yeah, I think this city center it has got, it has huge potential. And I mean, we, you know, looking at the areas who have done it right. If you go up to Bellingham and go to Fairhaven, that little community is just so cool. It's hip. Yeah. They got four separate bars, four separate coffee shops. They have art. They have walking. They have everything. They have yoga. They have all these things that are just like right there. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Yeah. Like that is, people yeah. want that. It's That's a sense of community. Yeah, it's, it's it's really a community in here. It's it's kind of strip mall bill. You got Alderwood Mall, you got this, you got this, you got that, and you got to drive everywhere, and now 196 and 44th, and I'm not driving on that. Like, it's just. And you've got the Boundary Bay Pub that has incredible food and really good beer. Absolutely. <laughs> you been there? I have not, but I've Go. seen it. Okay. Go. You'll love it. Yes. <laughs> so I guess to, to answer no question M, right? So it's, it's not really a service. It's more, I feel the same way too with Shannon in terms of how do we make Linwood more vibrant? Everything's so spread out, right? There's no center where you can go for a one-stop shop. I mean, yeah, we keep saying the city center is coming, but what can we start doing like, in addition to the city center to show that, hey, Linwood is, is where it's at, right? And once we have the city center, it's just going to skyrocket even more. Uh, I mean, if you think about where our gym's located, like, you can go to the gym, and then you go to thrift stores. It's like, it's not really a one-stop shop <laughs> kind of area. You know I mean? There's a dry cleaner, but it's like, there should be more things around that area. And I feel like, what are we doing to attract businesses, and not just one-off businesses, but pockets of businesses to kind of come together and, and kind of stamp their, their place in the area to say, hey, we're going to have a yoga place, a, a gym, a coffee shop, uh, a cool little restaurant, an eatery. You, you know what I mean? Like we need to attract pockets of businesses that kind of go, that integrate well together. So. Hmm. Yeah, I, I agree with what you're saying and Shannon too. If we're really serious about our city center, we have to heavily invest in letter M here in city center. Um, whether it be beautifying, just simply beautifying the sidewalks so that, you know, outside developers, they look and see, oh, what's going on in Linwood? What are they about to do? You know, the sidewalks are wide, they're beautiful. Um, I think that that's what's going to attract people is when they start to get a sense of something that's about to happen. Right now, if you look at city center, it, it looks stagnant. You know, there's not much going on. Um, so if the city would invest a little bit more in, in infrastructure there, putting up you know, nice, nicer lampposts. Uh, I don't know if you guys have been to downtown Bothell recently. They're undergoing a beautiful redevelopment process right now. Um, and uh, there's a business there, uh, McMillan's, and it's a gr if you've never been there, you should check it out. They offer some really nice perks. I mean, if you're a, a, a resident, they'll let you swim in the indoor lagoon for free. 
and they'll also let you rent out their uh, event spaces for free to host birthday parties or meetings. So it's those perks like that that get people and attract people to that area. So that's why I was saying if we have more perks, we can create more perks, we will drive more people to our city and it'll become more of a hip and happening, trendy town. Thank you. Councilmember Sutton, would you like to ask a question? Uh, yes, I would. Um, I'd just like to have a little bit more dialogue, if I can, uh, regarding the, uh, the how to reach the diverse um, market um, in terms of businesses. Any, any comment on that? So I'll speak for myself. We do a lot of social media marketing. I don't know if you guys have seen our ads, but they're all over the place. And there, there's different types of ads, right? Catered towards like gender, age groups, uh, even interests. So using social media for me ha has been working well in terms of getting different kind of, and it shows with who our membership base is, very diverse membership base. Uh, I, I mean, that's, that's working well for us. Um, Shannon, I don't know if you've seen our ads, but <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just kidding. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah social media is, is the way that we've been going about it. Mm -hmm. So you basically uh, target a specific uh, audience. So we launched like six ad sets, right? Uh, 25 to 35, 36 to 54, 55 and above. And then we did two ad sets for men and women. Mm -hmm. And you can even get deeper into that too and start adding interests and like, income level, stuff like that. And when we do our retargeting campaign, I know I'm getting re really technical with Facebook uh, jargon, but you can get really specific on demographics using that kind of medium. So I think my challenge here is that um, the type of businesses that I'm, I'm referred to is, is back in the day for me, my, um, my family had a mom and pop store in the community in which we live. And they did not keep up with any kind of technology at that point in time. So, <laughs> and I'm sure there's other businesses now that are not able to even afford to have social media and that type of thing. So what would you advise, what would you advise on how could they possibly uh, be engaged more into their community? So we, we tried both routes, right? We started the kind of the grassroots, going to all kind of different events. Um, we did, you know, we're doing like like fairs and booths and stuff like that, um, which which turned out well. But if you really want to penetrate a larger audience, and the thing with social media is a lot of it is free, right? It just it takes time to just create content and content of just sharing who you are, your story. You know where you guys come from and that that's going to resonate with different kind of audiences right so um, I mean I guess you got to do both you got to have that local presence to show them that yeah. and go into these local events as well as the, the social media as well but that my biggest advice is if you want to be more competitive in today's world and reach out to a large audience mm -hmm. you have to adopt social media Councilmember Hurst, would you like to ask a question? I just had a first a quick follow up to Susan. Where you, you had indicated that you weren't comfortable calling mm -hmm. the social. Oh, sorry. <laughs> there you go. You weren't comfortable calling the social worker. And I was curious why. No, I did. Oh, you did. I did. Okay. Um, but it felt odd to me that um, I, I guess I assumed that it was a police situation. It mm -hmm. wasn't something that I had to handle. Um, it just felt odd to me. I did call. and yeah. But by the time, you know, you call someone and then they're gone for the day. You know, they leave and then they come back at night and then I deal with it in the morning, right. every morning, you know, because our first class is 6 a.m. So I'm there at 5.30 or so. And... Um, Usually they kind of would scatter off, but it was it was just it was odd to me that I felt odd doing it. Right. It just felt yeah. weird to me that I was 
I you, didn't know what to do or what to expect or right do, do you know if that she ever showed up um, yes okay. I believe it was a guy and this is about probably last summer mm -hmm. not last summer so um, not the one that we just got done with <laughs> was just a short time ago although it feels like it was right. a long time ago so um, it was a guy and he came and basically it looked like they chatted for a while and then he took off and so did the other guy okay all right just curious yeah. um, but I'm, I'm more curious as far as uh, a general feeling among businesses here in Linwood um, what would you consider a fair way to assess a city business fee or tax I know there was some, I heard rumblings. So I'd like more than rumblings. <laughs> Fun. I'll take that one. Um, so last February, the US uh, Department of Commerce announced that for the first time in history, online sales had surpassed department stores and brick and mortar retail sales for the first time ever. And so what that means is small businesses are getting squeezed and we're getting taxed left and right. Um, the times are changing. So I think the way that we're getting fee or taxed should also change too. Uh, for example, if you look at Linwood's business uh, license fee right now, currently Linwood charges $103 for an annual business license. On top of that, they charge $48.50 per employee that works 14 hours or less per week. And any employee that works 15 hours or more per week um, adds another $93 per employee. This fee structure makes it extremely difficult for businesses to grow their business. Uh, it penalizes small businesses for growing and forces them to keep staffing at a minimum level. So how are we supposed to create more jobs for this community if we're getting fined, basically, for doing so? Mm -hmm. um, if I was Amazon and I wanted to bring a thousand employees to this city, it would cost almost $100,000 just to have a business license here. If you compare this to Seattle, uh, Seattle's business licenses are based on a taxable revenue um, tier system. Uh, so at the bottom of the tier, if you're a business and you bring in $20,000, the city charges you $55 for a business license. And at the top of the tier, if you're, let's say, like Amazon or Google, and you bring in $5 million or more, it's only $2,400. And when I say only, compare that to, you know, 100000 And not only that is if you apply for a business license in the second half of the year, it's only half that at $1,200. So if you compare $100,000 to $1,200 or $2,400, would you come to Linwood or would you go to Seattle? So, you know, we saw City Council adopt the head tax last year and they quickly repealed it um, about a month later. So by charging a head tax, we're making a statement to these bigger companies uh, with quality workforces, you know, like Boeing, Microsoft, that not to come to Linwood. Um, we're, we're sending a clear message that says, we don't want you guys here. Uh, if we look at the business license fee in Everett, it costs, they charge $83 for the first half of the year. Between now and the end of the year, it's only half that at $41.50. So basically, for the price of taking a friend out to lunch, you could launch a business in Everett. Um, Edmonds has a very simple fee structure. It's $125. That's it. Doesn't matter the size of your company. Doesn't matter how much revenue you make. So I think, you know, times have changed. We should reevaluate um, and simplify some of the business license fees here to ensure that our city is competitive, fair, and equitable. And who would like to add to that? <laughs> <laughs> I'd just say drop the mic. Like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> like that's right there. I just, my pain of that tax, thank you. It just doesn't make sense to me. And I, for growing our business, we are being penalized. 
every year for mm -hmm. growing. And I'm like, this doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. And given that the majority of our team drives from out of town, mm -hmm. eats here, does all these things here, I'm, we're bringing people in that are helping the city and we're getting penalized for that. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense. So. Mm -hmm. Just so you know, we're having the, this whole meeting transcripted word by word, so we're catching everything you say. Everything. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's still more about it. <laughs> We're with you. Yep, we got gotcha. you. Um, so at this time, uh, we'd like to go around uh, and focus on our business owners again and just maybe go around the table and if there's anything you'd like to add at this point and then we'll ask council if there's anything they want to add and clarify. Um, and we want to go this way, says Christine Frizzell. So, George, would you like to? Oh, no, you're not no. a business owner. Could I have a quick Trevor, on how, point? Yeah. And, and sorry if this isn't appropriate, but I do see another business owner in the audience who I'm sure has, maybe this would be a nice time to bring her in. Um, she should be up here anyway since we have space. But and I'm putting you on the spot because we never talked about this, but Carol Ann Lee from Chef mm -hmm. Dane catering I, would anybody be opposed for her to come up here too and just ask a question if she thinks of something it's totally on the spot carolyn but <laughs> but i appreciate you coming and spending your night here thank you well carolyn's here because she's representing the chamber we asked the oh, chamber good. representatives mm. to come yes you should and have been Linda at the table Jones right from the beginning come, <laughs> but carolyn's on the board for the chamber and so she's been feverishly taking notes Every time the word chamber comes up, <laughs> she's taking that back to the chamber's board. So, um, so thank you for doing that, and welcome to the table. It, it's on. Um, so would, would you like to add anything at this point, or do you want me to go around the table first and yeah, let you get I'll it? contemplate for a little bit first to see where I want to add. All right. Thank you. Trevor, what would you like <coughs> sure, I'll go. us to um, know? Going back to Ruth Ross. I liked your question and I liked everyone's responses around the table to the city center and everybody had extremely valuable things where people live outside the city if you're a millennial or so forth based on all the things we talked about. I think what council can do and what government can do is, is um, get more density so then we, like I'm a builder so I'm going to speak from my builder developer hat on, you know, so we can build affordable homes, we can address that for your, your um, constituents, the um, places to eat and work, if you have that density in those cores, that's where people are going to want to live. You know, I hire people from millennials, 18 years old, up to people that are in their 60s. So there's different different needs. Um, so I think we can address a lot of that, or, or the council and government can address that by getting that density. And um, that's something we started with the Urban Growth Management Act, I believe it was 1990. So there's been a lot of wrestling in different municipalities and counties about how to keep making that happen. Um, I go to a lot of economic events, and there's a lot of people wanting to move to the northwest, to the Puget Sound region. Uh, when, I, when I was a kid, we moved back here in 1983 from the East Coast. I was seven. And I told my parents at the time, I said, man, that's a beautiful place. If it was, if it was more warm like California, there'd be 30 million people living here. Well, with global warming, that's going to be like California in, in 10 years. <laughs> we'll have 30 million people. Um, so it was kind of weird quiescence 36 years ago. Um, and people love it here. I, I love it here. I, I wouldn't want to live anywhere else in the world. I've been to all 50 states and 35 countries and been fortunate in my life. And this, this is where I want to live. And, and, and Linwood's a great place, like I said earlier. I think if, you know, going back to that statement, one thing that I think council and, again, government can do is loosen up some of those regulations, get more density, and, and from our perspective, you can get, you can drive down the cost of housing for, you know, apartment housing, for townhouse, single family, um, and, and help in that area. I know the city of Seattle, we're, we're very involved. 70% um, of the city is single family zoning still. And Linwood's very similar. There's a lot of single family zoning. I know there's pushback because I, I grew up, my parents live in single family zoning area. And I, so I know those push and pull and, and, and a lot of those debates. So it's not, I know it's not easy, but I think we can, um, as, as a team, get that stuff in the core, the city center, the opportunities that are, that are right in front of the city and everyone sitting at this table right now with light rail and everything coming up here. It's, it's, it's the time is now to do it right. And we can become the Bothells and 
all the other places. I've been to McMinimins and been to up to Fairhaven and all these places. And it's like, wow, these are cool cities. I like what you, what everyone around here mentioned. So going back to that statement is what I'm trying to. Thank you, thank Trevor. You. Flex, do you have more to add? Yeah, probably um, touching on question G. Advice to new business owners, new to Linwood. Maybe just having like a, a kit. Like, a, hey, if you're thinking about starting a business in Linwood, here's a kit. Or, hey, you're, you're now a business owner and getting established. Here's a, a kit, like a playbook. And it's, it's setting up steps like, hey, join the Chamber of Commerce. You know, meet a guy like Fong. Um, you know, <laughs> go to council meetings. <laughs> I mean, Fong's like, he's been like one of my navigation mm -hmm. systems, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, growing my business. Mm -hmm. So it's just knowing a lot of the key connections in the community, but making that more transparent to, to new business owners. And really just, just put a playbook out there. And, market it. Thank you. Shannon? Yeah, I, I think we're trending in the right direction. I super appreciate this meeting tonight and getting uh, voices at the table to be heard. That means a lot that you're investing, our city is investing in us. And so thank you for that. Um, and I've, I've been around here long enough to see that, yes, we are trending in a good direction. Uh, and just more of this. I would love to see a follow-up to this meeting in some way, shape, or form of what are the actionable steps, uh, what, are, what are we implementing, and how can we all use what we learned tonight. Thank you. Huh? Yeah, I, too, would like to thank Council, Madam Mayor, for inviting and, and hosting us tonight. I think um, uh, well, I'm, I'm grateful that the city is now giving us a platform to have these two-way conversations. Madam Mayor, you and I had sat down about two years ago and talked about having something like this, and I'm glad to see that it's, it's, it's here now. And I hope that the city continues to have these collaborations because it adds more opportunities for us to, to grow and thrive here. So thank you. Thank you. John? Thank you also for being invited to the meeting. It's been delightful to meet all of you. I think the biggest thing that I would ask for, if you have any interest in coming and teaching for Marketplace Connections, I'm always looking for more teachers to benefit from your experience, your wisdom. So please give me your business card. There's no way you can have a cooler business card than Fong. No. <laughs> that is this, this is a good card. Get about it. It's really cool. Nice. Unfortunately, I didn't bring one up for everybody. So. I really want one. Yeah. <laughs> There you go. It's <laughs> oh, pretty cool. So give me your business card, please. And, uh, thank you. Yes. Yep. Uh, again, Susan, I, yeah. I also feel very um, fortunate to be here tonight. And it was great hearing that I'm not the only one that kind of has the same issues going on. Um, I think that this is a great city as well. I've been here a long time. I don't live here anymore, but that's just because I chose a different lifestyle but um, I would love to see this city just get a little more cleaned up a little more um, I'm not even sure how, how to even go about it I like the idea of adopt a street I don't know if that means that you gotta make it pretty <laughs> <laughs> you're just required to go out twice a year to go out on the street with um, your uh, your group of folks and clean up and pick up yeah, litter. Yeah, I it. like it. So my daughters, they love going out with our litter pickers to go out in the neighborhood. Oh, so getting them to do it is no idea. problem. I think it's a great idea because um, I kind of rely on my landlord to t kind of take care of the way the front of our place looks and it looks terrible. And <laughs> but, but I don't know. I, I know there's certain guidelines that they have to follow, um, but yeah, he just yeah. <laughs> it would just be nice to have it a little clean, cleaner look, especially where we are now. Thank you, Gunvor. Yeah. Um, well, uh, this has been really meaningful. It's it's been good. I feel like I'm old compared to all of these young business owners. <laughs> But so I think we should just assign Flex the job of working <laughs> because you did say something that I thought was really uh, well said. You said that um, I'm paraphrasing. Uh, we should get together, and it doesn't have to be in a physical 
state, we can get together and form uh, communication with the council members and others, the fire department, the police department, the building department. We, we should do this, and you are assigned. Okay. I'll, tell, I'll take it on. Count me in. No, that, that's that's a great point. If I could piggyback, because there's a lot of great business owners in here. The council is awesome. Mayor, you're, you're awesome. Like at first, I was intimidated to meet Mayor. But once I got to know, I was like, that's awesome. But it's like I feel like there's a lot of hidden goodness in here that the community needs to know about. And if as we get together on these social platforms, we all share it with our our following. People are like, whoa, that's that's how the city council is working. That's how cool the mayor is. And it just <laughs> kind of, we needed to, you know, just expose all the goodness happening. Is all I'm saying, and we can do it. Yeah. Social. Yeah. <laughs> so thanks, Mick Nicola. Thank you, Jose. Uh, I appreciate for getting invited. I mean, business owners. Uh, sometimes you just take for granted what you pay, and I've always the the yearly. Head taxes always kind of bug me, but I never complain about it because, you know, I'm just one guy. What am I going to do, you know? But it's not just me. <laughs> so, <laughs> and I didn't hear that. And uh, We've some way of changing it if it helps. <laughs> but I like to, you know, I, I don't reach out to other business owners really. Still, I just keep it to myself. And, you know, uh, but I like yeah. hearing that from other business owners that they're on the same page and think alike or, you know, so it helps me. You know, feel a little bit better. <laughs> terrific. So, council, does does anyone have any? Oh, oh Carolyn. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, please, I'll pitch please in a contribute. Bit. <laughs> um, I think that from business owner perspective, I think I echo much of what um, is said. So I'll wear a little bit more of my chamber hat to sort of represent. Um, you know, the Linwood Chamber, and I know that's been mentioned a lot, which is fantastic to hear that from both sides of the groups that are here. Um, I joined the chamber that was, I first joined the Edmonds, actually Economic Alliance of Snohomish County, and then I joined the Edmonds Chamber and the Linwood Chamber when I opened my business five years ago in Linwood. Why don't you tell us what that is? Um, <laughs> the e uh, Economic Alliance Snohomish County was formed by like South, Count, South Snohomish County and Everett and several organizations. Um, and that covers all of Snohomish County. And then um, I have a catering company, so I felt like being right. positioned in Edmonds and Linwood made a lot of sense to partner with those chambers. Um, and I've seen great support because those put me in front of an audience of a lot of businesses that I hadn't met before. So we have a kitchen here in Linwood. I live in Edmonds. I've lived in Edmonds for 17 years until I joined the chamber. I didn't understand what that community was about which told me I needed to be better partnered with businesses. So I, um, the Linwood Chamber when I joined it five years ago was 16 people in a really small room at Embassy Suites and I thought, why did I write that check? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> I was like, what was I thinking? Mm -hmm. And now we're 150 members strong with the tomorrow's um, chamber lunch has 85 people. It's a sold out event at Embassy Suites. I mean, it is a different chamber. And it's exciting to see how much that we have partnered with the city of Linwood and the support from the city of Linwood. Um, just awarded a grant to help support the efforts of the chamber. Um, so I feel like at that grassroots level of businesses that wanted to come together and form a chamber again in Linwood that that was necessary and I see that growth continuing to happen. Um, I think several of the things that came up today, I kept thinking that would be the chamber's role. Um, I think having a monthly online call-in conference call of business members, whether you're new or you're old, and just discuss matters, if that was something that the chamber ha headed up. Um, and then the chamber became the voice to then share concerns back to the city, that that <coughs> felt like a good partnership to me. So um, I will gather all of these fantastic notes and make sure I bring them back. Um, but I think just as business owners, making sure that we're out having each other's backs and supporting each other's businesses and that the city is doing the same. Um, I, I'll share a crazy story. I participated in a local huge festival. Um, we were one of the local food trucks at that festival and many of the food trucks that were there were not local. There was a token couple of two. Um, and the mayor was there from that local city and went to a truck and promoted and talked all about these fabulous lobster corn dogs. And I thought, wait a minute, I'm one of two food trucks. 
that is part of your chamber and part of your city and you're touting a business that isn't part of that and I don't really feel that here I feel that here you know I get business I get referrals from the city and so I think continuing on that path to make sure that we continue to support each other is really valuable so yeah thanks for letting me join the table thank you Mr. President thank you again I, I want to thank all of you for being here I know um, more likely than not you've already had a very long day <laughs> and to come and spend your evening here to to help us try to help you even more if we can um, is is fantastic so I appreciate that and I've heard a lot about uh, different forms and groups and things like that that may be of interest so the question I have is is would you as business owners really be interested in some other types of forms and particularly as flex mentioned virtual forms or groups uh, where we could discuss topics that are relevant to your business uh, with regard to the city with regard to other businesses with regard to possibly things that are happening in the state that the city can or may have some control over and if that's something that is of interest uh, what are the barriers to your particular business um, that would prohibit you possibly from participating in something like that uh, and, and I say that because I know some of you have a business where you are you, for instance at Exop you're located at Exop you may be doing things during the day where you're not there but you might be, but, um, but you know if, if you do developing and things like that if, if you're one that's on the road a lot maybe um, that might be a barrier so are there barriers to having a group like this or a forum that we should also be aware of so in our efforts to try and start that we can be cognizant of those things Fong you're leaning in I think the two top barriers would be for a business owner time mm -hmm. and also lack of tech savviness maybe um, there's a lot of furniture store owners that I know um, that still handwrite their invoices and so a lot of these mom and pop shops even larger stores um, I think uh, may not be privy to being tech savvy enough to be able to get on social media and that might be one of the barriers and, and when you say time are you talking a specific time where we could all get together or just time in general just time not in general, general. Okay. yeah I mean if you're if a business owner is serious about it and they want to be involved they'll make time they'll find time so okay. I would add though to me one of the barriers is people finding out about that so I felt like when I started my business and I got the doors open I had many ahas that I was like wait that resource existed gosh that would have been great to know so I think that falls in that same category like you can have this great resource that's available but if a new business or an existing business doesn't know about it then it doesn't serve any purpose so how do you get that message out yeah outreach I think is important um, I wouldn't even know about this meeting tonight had I not been invited to it so I think if the city can do a good job of getting that information out through um, every outlet possible that you guys have that would be great any other advice Vice President Frizzell. If I could just ask a follow-up to that. Where do business owners get their information about what's going on around the city? Other than tonight's invite. Because this is a struggle for us as to how do we connect with people? What, what works, what doesn't work? Maybe we can go Gunvor and then Fong. I read um, Linwood Today, Linwood Times, the newsletter, the the um, uh, that the city send out, and I kind of make sure that I do that. I feel that that's my job to make to keep myself. And then I talk to Councilwoman Shannon and other people I know on the council. But I mean, I do. It's our job as business owner to find out, to sustain ourselves in business. So that's what I do. And it didn't, we didn't used to have Linwood today, for instance. So it's wonderful that we have the kind of publications that we, that 
Okay, I've noticed that a lot of businesses, some that are here, advertise in those publications, and that's really great. So that's how I keep myself informed. Well, so the Money Business Consortium has a Facebook page, and I, I try to share anything that I hear from the city or from Linwood Times. Um, so anything that's business related to Linwood, I try to share it on our Facebook page. And we're currently working on a new website, so that might be another tool to uh, get the word out. Council members, any other <coughs> follow-up questions? Anybody? Anybody. Oh. Council member Hurst? Sure, I've got one. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so recently, the council revised the business fee ordinance. And I was curious if any businesses were contacted about that. So that's a bad one on us. But I think from this discussion, it, it, you know, I, I hear your pain as far as the online purchases and, and what it's doing to the uh, brick and mortar. And um, in the finance committee, we keep on asking um, Director Springer how much of this sales tax is coming in to get an idea. And the state doesn't <laughs> separate it, so we, we can't find that. But I know it's happening. And so I, I think we are trending towards yeah, let's look at our, our business fees seriously again. Um, you know, head tax, uh, boy, if people knew we had the head tax out here. It hasn't been really publicized, you know. I don't want these big uh, construction guys coming out and yelling at us like they did in Seattle. So um, I think we need to really take a look at that because we have to partner with businesses. Um, I guess I'm not asking a question. I guess I'm just talking, but um, I'd rather have the city create a partnership than do surprises on you. And so we we need to figure out how to communicate together. Thank you. Any other comments? One little one. Yeah. Um, the some of the um, people that are running for Limbo City Council came to. Linwood Rotary Club, and Linwood Rotary has a um, Facebook page. And some of you guys have your picture there now, because I put them in there today. <laughs> <laughs> Quick question, is this yeah. being like currently broadcasted? No, or just but recorded? it's recorded. recorded. Could, could we broadcast it at, at like the next one maybe? And again, right, we're trying to attract millennials, just more technology savvy folks, and the, the reach is just crazy if, if we start adopting more technology. And I don't think we have a barrier to get these kind of groups together. As long as you have, I can show you guys how to use Zoom video conferencing. Oh, yeah. We can record it and broadcast it on all of our personal business Facebook pages and share it out. So let's go viral. That's, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> Next yeah. step, <laughs> go viral. No, right, right. Yeah. In the right way. Yeah. Good <laughs> viral. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, anything else, Council? Council President? Mm -hmm. Yeah, again, I, I, I want to give my sincere appreciation for all of you taking your time this evening uh, because I know that it's, it's a sacrifice uh, for you to be here, especially after a long day, uh, but even even if you have the day off, <laughs> it's it's still it's time that you be you know you you were willing to give up and and come and uh, speak with us and meet with us. So it is very much appreciated, uh, and we will take steps to um, make these some of these items that we can actionable, uh, as was mentioned, and and have a follow up and be able to kind of show what it is that we are doing or provide steps for what we are doing or going to do in the near future to uh, continue these discussions. So th thank you again for your willingness to come this evening and, and share and be vulnerable with, with us and everyone that's listening. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. So Council, I don't know if you want to adjourn at this point or we'll say goodbye to our friends and then 
Do you have any more business? I think if we take a break, and then there's a Okay. So, all right. We'll take we'll take a short break, and then council will come back to the table and finish the business of the night. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. This guy used to the sales. Thank you. So, uh, council president would just like to do a little bit of wrap up. Uh, for the closing of our item A. So I'll hand the mic over to him. Thank you. Uh, similar to what we're going to try to do with the housing uh, discussion we had, uh, I, I want to make sure that we continue to move on the round tables that we have and continue these discussions. Uh, so I don't want to let a lot of time pass before we discuss it again. Um, so I, I guess the first thing is, are there thoughts or suggestions from council that you have now uh, about either a follow-up to this or discussing some of the items that were brought forward, whether it's talking about uh, the head tax and that kind of stuff or whatever else? Councilman Ross? As I was sitting here, I just thought maybe it's time to... Um recreate the business advisory group. Councilmember Cotton. Uh, thank you, Honor. I mean, I, I heard some really good feedback tonight from our business community, and I think there were a lot of, I don't think necessarily actionable items for council, but there was definitely some, there was a good list of things for us to at least consider further discussion on, um, you know, uh, Fong brought up some really good comments about the contrast of our tax structure versus our neighbors. And so I thought that was very, um, that was really great to hear just the business perspective. I mean, I know we're here to, to balance all the viewpoints and perspectives, but it was really, I thought, beneficial to hear from each of the, the business owners, um, you know, and, and doing more of this, you know, because uh, the other comment was, you know, if I hadn't been invited to this, I wouldn't have even known it was happening. And so, I mean, I think we're all kind of noodling around this. How do we get more people aware that this is happening and get more people engaged so we can make better decisions? So, that's yeah. just my, that's my wrap up. Anything else? Yeah, Councilmember Sessions? Yes, I very much enjoyed myself tonight and hearing um, from these different folks was uh, beneficial in a variety of ways for me. Um, for, for, our, for our forum tonight, it had to be invited because we don't have enough room to, you know, open it up to all the businesses and publicize it like that. However, clearly they want those kind of things. And I, I think that it was um, good to have Karen representing the chamber um, and then saying out loud again to folks that that's a role that they could be playing and the economic lines and, and, and the, there's already some things we don't have to reinvent the wheel on some of this stuff and I think that was and it was just so cool for to see them be excited about seeing each other you know it was like right on you know it's like you're we're rooting them on you know um, and how they want to be part of things and be creative and and um, so that was really um, exciting for me and bolstered me as well so thank you for um, all of us deciding to do this and um, again following up it would be very important thank you Councilmember Sutton thank you mayor I just want to add um, so we don't lose sight of it when it comes to getting information out, we have talked about a reader board. And I think I'm going to say, please put it on the list so we don't forget about that. Because that is one way of certainly uh, being able to advertise to the masses versus just a few people. Thank you. So Public Works has uh, dedicated a project manager, I think it's Nick, to come and start the process 
it will take some time. It's going to be expensive, just so you know. Um, but I think there's a little pot of money that Bill has found that might be helpful to that project. Uh, but he needs to understand, and then Julie, I think, wants to be part of that team, understand what is it you're trying to communicate, um, and, and get all the, so that he can gather all the specs from you. So that's coming to your table soon. <laughs> yeah. Council President. Thank you. It, for, for this particular meeting, the, as was mentioned, the reason we asked council members to invite uh, businesses and only two is so that everyone would have a chance to speak because in, in this forum that we have uh, and in the, the time frame that we had uh, with which we had to actually develop this, it, I, I didn't think if we just shot it out there to everyone and had a lot of people come, it would have been as beneficial. But as a follow-up, I think to that point, it's, it's important that we sort of, uh, like we did with the community outreaches um, earlier, either this year and, and last year, um, is, is trying to get out and find a venue that may accommodate something more like that and host either a panel or a, if we each have different groups, right, have breakout groups where we can have those same discussions uh, and gather information that would give more business uh, owners an opportunity to, to voice either the concerns, the things that they found great that are supportive or whatever else, ideas that they have, um, and then we can bring that back and, and do that same kind of thing where we have this follow-up, uh, find ideas that will help that we can implement or work toward implementing. Um, and <clears throat> in, in that sense, then we could do that a, a massive outreach and just, you know, throw the nets out there and get as many people to come in as we can. Um, and I think that would be, finding a venue like that, that would be very beneficial as well. Um, but for this particular event, doing that I don't think would have um, suited the discussion as well because I know a lot of people would have things to say and not everyone would be able to speak. Uh, and just to make sure that we at least had um, you know, and, and we heard a lot of common themes, and I think that was one of those beneficial things, is that when you hear a number of businesses that are in different uh, sectors of business or completely different businesses altogether saying the same thing, um, as much as we'd hate to generalize, you can assume that there are other businesses that also experience those same things. So I, I think we've got a lot of great information that we can use both to start some actionable steps but also plan to have some sort of some sort of a follow-up where we can invite people to come and, and you know at the council's discretion however we want to set that up and what kind of a venue we want to do that in uh, I think we can accomplish that and and really continue to move forward and progress in this process uh, I guess the other thing if there are no more comments great if there are great uh, but one of the things that I'm also looking for are ideas for follow-up. What are some of the things that you would like to see happen in order for us to follow up? Do we want a similar round table or do we want something else that uh, similar to what I was just expressed or do you have other ideas of how we can, can do that follow-up? I, I will tell you, I think similar to what Beth did with the housing, she sends a thank you note and kind of follows up with everyone that was here um, and we can also just ask if, if there are specific questions we want her to, to send them, you know, anything like that. But outside of that, what other things can we Councilor do? Cotton? I'm so glad you asked, Council President. Um, so I think a, a couple things just off the top of my head are um, getting the Planning Commission and staff of the Planning Commission to consider, um, you know, what, what was the planning and zoning that went into something like a Fairhaven development in Bellingham or creating kind of like these um, targeted nexus developments? I know that we've got like a college district planned around the community college, but how can we really invigorate that? Um, you know, talking with David Kleitsch about creating some kind of outline or guide to like creating a desired of businesses, you know, like what would we consider to be a path?
palette of businesses that would be um, you know mutually beneficial to each other in a grouping so that you could go to X location park and you could uh, go for a run on the inner urban trail uh, grab some coffee with a friend do some dining and then go see an art show like how do we create like not a big thing like city center but how do we create maybe like a, a couple pallets like that and maybe talking with David Kleitsch about you know what that would look like so I, I don't know and then the other thing is I think is a, a finance committee thing is as talking with our finance department about I know that we review licenses and permits as a, a business licenses and permits as a single kind of block of dollars but maybe trying to break into a little bit more if we wanted to dial the knob on the head tax what is our specific revenue from that and so when we do start talking about it we know what the gap is too because if we're like well we want to eliminate head tax well we need to know too what kind of gap we're creating in revenue so we know how to come up with some way to backfill it or we know what the cost of doing that is so I think those are just a few things off the top of my head Councilmember Hurst um, yeah Councilmember Cotton got the thing I want to talk about is do we send next year's a budget year do we want to go to the finance committee and, and talk about what do we do about the the fee business fees and everything um, now one thing possibly we could do is uh, we have these people's addresses um, send out a survey to them and tell them what do you think about what you know what what would you think would be a fair fee or you know do you want us to well we know what they'll say but anyway uh, <laughs> but we get an idea at least of you know hey do you want to be charged you want to be no tax you know you know that would stir some people I'm sure and get some responses so that's it but yeah the general idea is yeah let's bring it to finance committee and start looking at it so we can plan it into the budget thanks Ruth Ross thank you I also think it might not be a bad idea to have another round table with some other organizations such as the Economic Alliance the Chamber maybe some of the larger employees we can ask them the same questions. Um, employers, not larger employees. We don't need any larger employees. <laughs> but I think that talking to small businesses was really a, a good step, but maybe talking to some of the other organizations that work with, work with small businesses would be a good idea also. And they were talking about resources, and I went to a panel discussion at the library about small businesses, and there is massive amounts of information and help at the library for uh -huh. small businesses. Uh -huh. So maybe even someone from SCORE or, or someone from the library themselves would be willing to come talk about that too. So, I mean, not necessarily has to happen right away, but I, that's another side to the coin that we might want to look at and hear from, like the bigger folks. Any other ideas? You're good? Uh, so uh, I don't have comments tonight. Council President, back to you. Any Council President comments? No. Okay. Council comments? Council comments? No? All right. Well, we're adjourned. Thank you. It was a good night. Thank you.